Hey, so today I'm gonna teach you guys some tips and tricks with the Panasonic S1H. These are some things that I didn't really know and that are super helpful with this camera. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe, like the video if you do end up liking it. It's for the YouTube algorithm. It just helps, it helps. Subscribe and like the video. Let's dive on in. So the very first thing that I wanna talk about is something that I just thought of. So this camera is weather sealed. You can put it like in the rain and it does depend on what lens you get, but it's not it's not waterproof, but it is weather sealed, so it can get wet. There is this little dial up here at the front of the camera. It's for an external flash, I think. You want to keep that closed. Make sure that is nice and closed, because if it's not, then your camera is no longer weather sealed. Keep this little thing closed. All right, so let's actually get into some of the stuff. So first thing that you're gonna wanna do is go into your settings. You're gonna want to turn on constant preview. This is going to help when taking pictures and just changing your ISO, your shutter, all of your settings. You'll actually be able to see what it is that you're doing, what your image looks like real time on your screen because when it's off you have no idea until you take that picture. The next thing is with your audio jack right here. So this camera does supply phantom power to smaller microphones but some microphones have their own power source. This microphone is the DAD D3 Pro. It has its own external power source. So as you can imagine, I don't need the camera to supply any power to that microphone. I didn't know about this at first because no other camera has given me the option of customizing the audio jack. So I just, I didn't know that it was a thing, but I was recording a video with this camera and there was like this hissing and buzzing and like there's just this sound. Like I, just, I didn't know what it was. So we're gonna fix that. We're gonna fix that sound. So what you're gonna wanna do is go into your settings yet so what you're going to want to do is go into your settings yet again and go and find mic socket. You can change this socket to be three different things. Mic input with power, just a mic input, or a line input. So when it is power, it is supplying that phantom power to your microphone. When it's just a mic input, it's just a passive input. So your microphone is supplying its own power. And then of course line is for when it's not a microphone and just an external source that you're plugging in. So if your microphone phone has external power, if you're using a Rode VideoMic Pro, if you're using the D80 D3 Pro, any microphone that can power itself, you're going to want to change it to just normal mic input. If my microphone is supplying its own power, if my camera is supplying power, that's where that hissing and buzzing and sound comes from. So this is going to get you nice clean audio with this camera. The next tip that I have for you today is going to be with the autofocus. Focus. So to get the absolute best results with the autofocus, you're going to want to go ahead and film in 4K. So when filming in 6K, the camera is it's putting all of its processing power into getting that 6K video. All of it. It doesn't have any power left over to put into autofocus. So to get the absolute best results with autofocus, you're going to want to film in 4K, something that's not 6K. You don't want to film in 6K. Film in any other thing that's not 6K. That's how you're gonna get the best results with autofocus. I have an entire autofocus video. It's gonna be linked in the description. So go ahead and check that out. Another thing dealing with the autofocus, you're gonna to wanna to put this on C. That stands for constant autofocus. S is for still and MF is manual focus. So C is gonna be constant focus. Little side tip. So another thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is right out of the box, no matter if your camera is on or off, it's gonna show your battery percentage and how much space you have left left on your SD cards. We can change that. We can turn that off. Save a little bit of a uh, battery power while doing it. So, in the settings you can find status LCD and under the status LCD, go to display while power off and turn that off. Of course, you can keep this on if you want, but it's gonna save you a little bit of battery power and I don't feel like I need this on all of the time. So our last and final tip of the day is going to be with shutter angle. So this camera has a whole bunch of features that are desirable in bigger cinema cameras and in the cinema world. So we can change the 
the shutter a little bit and we can change that from the conventional shutter speed to a shutter angle. Okay, so it's um, under SS slash gain operation in the menu. So you can go ahead and change it from second slash ISO to angle slash ISO. Well, like what, what is this? What is it doing? So normally you want your shutter speed to be twice your frame rate. So if you're shooting at 24 frames per second, you want your shutter to be one over 50th. If you're shooting at 60 frames per second, you want your shutter to be one over 125. This is gonna eliminate that completely. So it goes into an angle based system. So now it's gonna be a degree. This is gonna help you get rid of some flickering that you may see, but most importantly, you're never gonna have to worry about changing your shutter again without like that flickering or for stylistic points. So you're gonna wanna make sure that this is at 180 degrees. That's the exact same as doubling your frame rate, but you don't have to change that ever again. So as long as this is at 180 degrees, when you go to change your frame rate, you don't have to change it. You don't have to worry about it. It's always gonna be correct. So I would highly recommend that you guys change your shutter from your normal shutter settings into your shutter angle. It's gonna save you time, headache. You're not gonna be left with too much motion blur or not enough motion blur. You're not gonna have to remember that extra step when filming. So those are all of the tips and tricks that I have for you guys today. Go and film with this camera. It's an amazing camera that bridges the gap between cinema and just mirrorless cameras. Expect my full review on this camera pretty soon. I have a lot of content on this camera on my channel. So if you just bought this camera, if you're curious about it, go ahead and subscribe. It's gonna help you out. It's gonna help me out. You know what else is gonna help me out? Liking the video for the YouTube algorithm. It helps a lot more than you may know. It takes two seconds, so just like the video. But that is all that I have for you guys today. So thank you so much for watching and, and yeah, all right, all right.